I was asked by Chris System Academy to go and talk to all of their teachers um, before they start school this year. If you know, the Academy is an Orthodox school that's in Bethlehem area, and they're up to like 45, close to 50 students for this year. Um, and what the headmaster wanted me to speak about was uh, prayer, and, and for, specifically for the teachers and how, how prayer will affect their ability to teach. So what I'm giving you is basically my first thoughts about that. That's going to be a 40 minute talk. This is going to be five minutes. So um, <clears throat> I would say that what we do out of the classroom makes the biggest difference in how things go in the classroom, right? It's actually not just the preparation, but how we live our life ultimately transforms what how our ability to teach and what's going on in the classroom and the number one thing about that is prayer so i'm asking and encouraging and challenging all of you that you pray daily for your kids you pray for them by name don't just say in all the kids of my of my class but you pray for them by name you pray for specific things for them right and you could find that out it, as you just have conversation in the class or if you, if you know the family but also a asking you could this could be something that we could do in class what should I or what should we pray for for you this week so kids could actually say to each other what they would like others to pray for about and you cultivate help them to begin to think about what we could ask others to pray for and but you're hearing at the same time and praying for that for them um, and a fourth thing about prayer would be to start a journal. And that journal would, in your journal, you would have maybe a page for each one of your kids or something. And as you're praying, as you're getting to know them better, that mean the purpose about praying for them is when we pray for somebody, we actually begin to care about them more and be, be more open to what's going on in their life. Um, and to keep a journal of thoughts that may come to you about that particular child. It might be, you know, I need to talk to their parents about this, or, oh, they're doing this special thing. You know, I'd really like to try to get to that. Okay, so all of that would, would be something that has to do with prayer. Should we stop at this point? Is that like three minutes? Oh, we can keep going. I'll keep going. Right. Um, <clears throat> when you plan, when you make your lesson plans, Yes, there's the content, and you want to convey the content, but how we convey that will make the biggest difference, right? The amount of creativity and interactivity that you build into that lesson will, will have the biggest um, impact upon how much the kids are actually taking away from, from the lesson, right? Yesterday, the thing that all the kids talked about when they went home was when Father Constantine was teaching them about how the disciples got afraid when the waves started hitting the boat, that he gave the, he brought a, a blue sheet and he used a little boat, which was actually his Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Indians helmet, and he put these little, you know, Lego guys in there that were the apostles, <laughs> and the kids like did the storm, right? And then when the waves get really bad, and so then they started Foo, and shooting the apostles all over the narthex, but the, that, <laughs> that, that was an excellent tool, you know, that, 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 and then, so the kids went home and they were able to talk about that lesson because they had fun doing it and it, it, it was creative. Um, as a part of their, our, our um, life in Christ, When you're teaching, we want you to think about the whole and not just think about what's going on in our class, right? So wherever we are in the liturgical schedule, to somehow be bringing that into what, what you're saying in the class. And it could be inviting kids to services or saying, hey, we just had this happen in the liturgical life, in the liturgical candle of the, of the church, incorporating something from what's going on in those feasts in the classroom. Maybe it's decorating the classroom. 
Maybe it's the prayer that you use in the beginning. Maybe it's a, something that's just on the table, an icon that you put there to mindful. Um, but we also want you to be aware of and bringing up with the kids um, youth group events um, that are things that are happening that we're ministering to these kids through their hope or joy or goya on on the local level on the regional level and on the metropolis level father constantine has been sending out these um he uses mailchimp and he uses something else and i get just as an email to all the families but the teachers should know what's going on for for their kids as well so we're going to make that change so that you're aware you're more aware of the other things that are happening here at the church and you know around us that the kids could plug into you know a, a thing that i would just be so grateful for is that if you every class could mention summer camp we made a big push of it this year next year we're, we're actually going to take the uh, vacation vacation bible school and kind of pattern it on the theme of next year's camp because camp happens before vacation bible school but the more kids that we get there to camp that that's going to feed into improving the vacation bible school even more so camp is one of the best experiences that the kids can have for their spirit uh, their spiritual formation it just it's more time that one week in camp learning and growing in the faith than a whole year of church school oh, you know, wow. if you think about it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so um, th th year, things so. like that Sorry. we had to go this year we had to um, something that we're doing we're going to start new this year and this kind of comes out of the work that we did as the effective Christian ministry team Amy Blasia John Thompson, Father Constantine, and myself this past year, every week, we had at least a two and a half hour session, either alone or with a small cohort or with everybody, all the churches that were involved in the in, in this program for, for nine consecutive months to understand more fully why kids, have, why we're losing children. And it's really because we've approached ministry in the wrong way. Instead of making it about your, their relationship most of all with Christ, but the relationship with everybody else, we made it more about programs. We made it more about um, just numbers and, and approaches, and we're not really addressing the true needs that the kids have and the practices that the church gives us that meets those needs, right? We're, we're going to unpack this more for, for everybody <coughs> as we go forward as we go forward this year because we developed a plan for, for our ministry for the children this past nine months that we're now going to start doing this year and there's a couple of particular things that we're going to focus on particular areas um, uh, of all the of all of our youth but one main thing that we're hoping to do is to create a family night I know that it used to be done in the past Marisa and I talked about this probably be on it Sundays because every single person that I've said Sundays or Wednesdays they just said Sundays so it'd be Sunday evening so not after church but probably starting with once a month, maybe as once every six weeks. If it, if it really catches on and people want it more often, we would, we would do more often. And that means we come back here as families, have, have some type of prayer, short prayer of service together, have some type of meal all together, and then for all ages, including adults, have some type of an activity. So the joy would do their thing and might be just a totally recreational fun thing might be educational, might, you know, it might be service oriented. The Goy would do their thing the same amount of time. And I want to be with the parents because for me and for us, the big, the, the biggest takeaway in, on all of this is what we already knew. And that is it's what goes on in the homes that ultimately determines more than anything else. And we've had it backwards. You've maybe heard me say this before, but we've been trying to teach the children and we just play games with the adults. And we need to turn that around. We need to be teaching our adults how to continue to grow and practice and live the faith, which will translate into their children seeing that, experiencing that more in the home. And then we just need to connect with the children, play with the children, you know, as opposed to thinking that we're the ones and the only ones responsible for their Christian formation, not just education, but Christian formation. 
So that's why we're hoping the family nights will work and we can start to get more of our parents really on board. Um, and I know I only got three out last year, but I'm hoping again to do more of the home church helps. That the, those videos about how we can practice things, the type of thing I was saying to you earlier, mm -hmm. stuff that we do in church, how we can actually do it in our home too to make God present. There's so many. I just, when I lost Zoe, <laughs> when she moved to Philadelphia, it was so much easier with her there to do them. I've talked to James and he's on board to do them for me, but I still need to do a lot of the videography work or whatever, send it over to him for him to edit and make it look nice to start putting them out. But I, but I hope we're gonna do those again. So as you know, think about how you can, I know some people showed them and they're gone. The final point is our example is what teaches the most. Right? The kids may not always see that example, but they're gonna sense it from the conversations in class. And, and they will see us. And, they, and, and hopefully, as we form a relationship with them, you know, we had, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Susan Rogers came and spoke to me and she had her concerns about how, why the choose so many of the youth are just not engaged in the life of the church as they used to be and she's she's concerned about her grandchildren but she's concerned about her whole community and she was saying how church school used to be in in the past and how some of the things we seem to have gotten away from and she said those teachers they they ask questions of the kids like what's going on and what's going on this week in your life and what's going on at home and they 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 showed a real interest not that I, we don't necessarily do that but she felt that, that that was a very important part of it. So um, <clears throat> I think that I think that um, what you do for yourself is the most important element of all of this. Are you participating in the sacraments of the church on a regular basis? How many times you know, how often are you going to confession? Are you even going to confession? Along with Holy Communion, there's really not much more powerful thing that we can do for ourselves to fine-tune and recharge our spiritual batteries. Are we regularly attending services, not just when we're teaching, but throughout the entire year, not just when there's church school? Um, are we involved in other ministries of the church? So are we growing? Are we, are we attending the, the educational aspects of uh, the, like our Wednesday night um, studies that we do, the seasonal studies, the Thursday Bible study. Jared, are you still there? Right. I'm here. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, and, you hear um, me? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So we need to be students if we want our children to get the enthusiasm for learning about the faith, right? Are we, are we ourselves studying and growing in our understanding and our practice of the Orthodox faith? If we are, our, we'll have a successful teaching year. We just, we know it will translate into that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.